Okay. Uh, I was trying to avoid feedback, but uh, all right. Um, we we're going to begin the day with uh, three wonderful lectures, um, and then um, we'll go uh, to the um, Casa Casa Arena, better known as the Sachi Mansion, where we'll have uh, tours uh, of uh, Casa Casa Arena. Followed by, oh, and uh, and we'll be doing that in, in two groups. Um, and while one group is touring, uh, the other group will be having refreshments in at the Art Deco Welcome Center, which is just a block away. Um, and uh, uh, while that's happening in the Art Deco Welcome Center, uh, our board member Joel uh, Joel Levine will be um, giving a brief talk on um, Sorry. Uh, Tel Aviv Art Deco. Um, then um, we'll have lunch at uh, Casa Casa Arena, and then we will have a half day tour of the things we haven't seen yet in, in Miami. Um, and then uh, uh, immediately after the buses return, um, we will uh, begin the, LG, the optional LGBTQ tour for those who are, uh, who are doing that tour. So that's the basic schedule for today, and we uh, begin with lectures, and um, our first lecture is uh, Silvia Borizione. Uh Please correct me if I didn't get that quite right. Um, uh, speaking on the Art Deco of our time, a constant aesthetic. So please welcome Sylvia. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for including me in this wonderful program. Um, we are very excited to have you here in Miami Beach. And um, uh, so first I would like to uh, just to, to talk about the title. Uh, the title was something abstract, but uh, to point out how, our, how Art Deco is still present among us, it's uh, probably the first uh, global style um, that started in Paris, as we all know, um, but uh, from uh, other influences and then spread all over uh, the world. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so I come from the Wilsonia that you will uh, visit uh, on a Thursday, we're waiting for you. And I'm not talking to, uh, so much about our uh, collection. Uh, Lee Nicholas, my colleague, um, who is a curator, also the Wilsonian, will talk about the, the building and all the, the Art Deco elements in our building. Uh, but I, I try to select some uh, uh, Art Deco um, of artworks from our collection just to introduce um, <coughs> our collection and uh, uh, our uh, um, Art Deco holdings. Uh, these two posters uh, um, are very interesting. Uh, the first one is a design for a poster. There was a competition in 1923 for uh, four posters for the 1925 exhibition in Paris. Uh, the first one by uh, Robert Roquin uh, didn't uh, w uh, win, and we have uh, the, the drawing for it. It's typical of the Wilsonian to have uh, uh, the second or third prize and not the first prize but it's a really a way to document uh, um, artists which have been uh, overlooked and uh, are underrated. Anyway, for me, the, uh, the poster uh, is really presents all the elements that we usually find in Art Deco. Uh, there is a symmetry, there are uh, uh, bright colors, uh, stylized nature, uh, geometry, uh, the exotic figure, and uh, in the background, uh, this um, um, kind of exotic architecture that uh, um, refers to the um, uh, colonies in Maghreb, uh, the French colonies in Maghreb, and uh, we know how uh, big influence came from African art in, uh, in French Art Deco and also in uh, French uh, avant-garde. Uh, the, the other poster uh, passed the selection. It's um, it's again another interesting uh, uh, expression of Art Deco showing uh, the stylized uh, rose, which is a typical uh, flower of Art Deco. 
and uh, uh, the smokestacks. So this uh, combination of art and the industry, which is uh, uh, typical of Art Deco. Uh, uh, we associate uh, um, Art Deco with France, uh, with the department stores, uh, Printam, Beaumarchais, uh, Lafayette. They started to have their own uh, uh, workshops, like for example, La Primavera was the Printam uh, workshop, and they all had their own pavilion in, uh, in Paris. Uh, <coughs> this is a, a, an original drawing uh, in the collection, and that's uh, one of the uh, photographs uh, from the portfolio um, showing all the pavilions present in uh, Paris. Uh, and as we know, there were many uh, countries that participated, uh, not Germany, because of, uh, after the war, she was not uh, Germany was not invited, not the United States, because they didn't think to have enough uh, modern uh, decorative arts, uh, but for example, uh, Austria, with the, its uh, pavilion by Josef Hoffmann, was very interesting, uh, showing uh, like a kind of a modern classicism, which is another element typical of Art Deco. Uh, and uh, if we think of the Wiener Werkstatt, uh, they really for, uh, like prepared, uh, they um, paved the way to Art Deco. Uh, another interesting presence was the, um, uh, the, the Netherlands. Their uh, style, which is called the Amsterdam School, is their uh, Dutch version of Art Deco, much more influenced by uh, the, by Indonesia, which was uh, uh, a Dutch colony at the time. And uh, we have in the collection the um, uh, living room, which you can see, uh, which was, uh, you can see on the right, which was exhibited at the, um, at the fair. <clears throat> so, we think uh, uh, mostly of uh, Art Deco as very decorative, but there was also another side which was much more geometric, even in France, where they looked uh, very much at their uh, Baroque and uh, uh, Rococo um, heritage. Uh, so this is, for example, uh, Robert, uh, Robert Malek Stevens, uh, who is for me one of the most interesting, uh, like modernist architects in uh, in France. Uh, and uh, you can see how his interior, which was inside the ambassade, uh, the French ambassade in um, uh, in Paris, uh, is much more geometric uh, uh, compared to all the others uh, that we are more uh, used to. And uh, his pavilion uh, for uh, like uh, for tourism um, is reminds uh, uh, like this uh, shape, this uh, um, let's say this um, more geometric and uh, uh, tower shape uh, reminds us of the Chicago World's Fair, which happened uh, in 1933. So how uh, Paris was so influential in Europe and then throughout uh, the world, uh, for the United States, uh, uh, as we know, Chicago was the main influential for architecture. Um, this building, which is uh, by Paul Cré, um, <coughs> uh, presents uh, like this uh, uh, combination of vertical and uh, um, horizontal elements, uh, which is uh, another uh, Art Deco feature. Uh, the architect uh, was French, he used to, to teach uh, uh, at the University of Pennsylvania and uh, he really brought uh, what we call uh, the uh, modern classicism uh, to the United States. And um, uh, <clears throat> Igor Polevinsky was uh, uh, his um, a student. Uh, Polevinsky, uh, if you look at, the, at this building, the Shelburne, which still exists here in, uh, in Miami Beach, uh, you can see how, like a kind of a reference to the um, the previous building, the um, which was the um, Hall of Science by Paul Cray. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very interesting hotel, and uh, I would like to, to sh now to point out some of the main buildings by Polevinsky that for me is probably one of the most interesting uh, architects uh, active in uh, Miami Beach. We know where there is a uh, Harry Hauser who designed uh, like even uh, this uh, uh, synagogue. Uh, there were uh, Elmore Dixon, there were uh, Albert Anis, there were many others. But Polivinsky, together with uh, Thomas uh, uh, Trippett Russell was uh, <clears throat> probably the one who re uh, was able to combine uh, uh, Art Deco with what we call international style in a way uh, which 
which really opened uh, like uh, opened the paved the way to a modern style uh, in uh, in uh, Florida, thinking also of the post-war architecture. <coughs> you, uh, I think uh, the I always uh, admire the uh, design of the Shelburne. It was uh, really um, made out con constructed of. Uh, um, poured uh, uh, in place concrete and it still resists um, and was uh, designed by uh, Richard Belsham who was the, uh, the engineer who also worked uh, with uh, Paul Vinsky and uh, Russell. So this is a drawing from uh, for the in uh, um, Florida architecture and allied arts. This was a um, yearly publication that promoted modern architecture and, let's say, uh, Art Deco, uh, modern, but also uh, Mediterranean architecture in Florida. And it lasted from 1935 to 1948, and luckily we have some, uh, most of them in our library. This is a view, uh, just to show how it was, how we can imagine before um, Miami with uh, these uh, like icons along the, the ocean and the nothing behind. Um, but uh, what I would like to concentrate on is the Albion Hotel, uh, because the, um, the Shelburne has been, had a, a new addition in the 1950s by Maurice Lapidus, uh, while the Albion is still preserved, um, let's say it's better preserved. This is a photograph uh, from the period when it was built, 1939. Um, it comes from the, uh, there is an archive of Polevinsky of photographs uh, at the History Miami uh, Museum. And uh, this is a nocturnal view. Uh, you can see uh, there is still a kind of uh, symmetry in this building and uh, the use of the portals, which is very typical in uh, Art Deco architecture, looking in a way to nautical architecture um, and um, and these two photos uh, show they are still uh, from the the period. Um, they show like the the building was the first uh, like mixed use building. We have then uh, the famous Fontainebleau, but uh, before the war, uh, the Albion was uh, a hotel with uh, um, uh, stores on the on the uh, on the first floor. And uh, the, I always like the, this motif of the zigzag uh, ribbon windows, which is typical of Polevinsky and uh, uh, Russell. Uh, another uh, photograph that shows uh, the, um, yes, you can see better, like this motif of the windows protected by a, a canopy because of the sun and the pouring rain. And this sculpture, which represents Albion, son of uh, uh, Poseidon. Um, this sculpture, sculpture was made by William Russell, who was uh, uh, the brother of uh, Thomas Russell. Uh, a photograph of, I don't know if you have visited the Albion yet, uh, you should go and visit it because it's still uh, very interesting. This is a photograph of the Albion as it was when it was uh, just uh, built. Uh, you can see like these uh, uh, reliefs on the wall. With, um, that reference the, the ocean and the uh, mari uh, marine uh, goddess, uh, the fountain. And uh, uh, now it's, um, it has been changed completely. Uh, there are still the, the columns, they haven't touched uh, the structure elements, but you can see on the wall there is an installation of, uh, I think, 92 artworks by Pers Purvis Young with a um, very uh, famous uh, self-made uh, artist, uh, very popular, which is in the collection of the Rubel family that own uh, the hotel. But as you can see, there is no more trace of the fountain, and um, uh, luckily they kept uh, the terrazzo floor. And in this photograph, you can see the double height of the lobby, which is a typical element of the, let's say, more monumental hotels here in Miami. Um, thinking of uh, the um, uh, buildings like the Rockefeller Center, which was a, um, a reference for the architects in Miami Beach. And uh, the, um, uh, in the courtyard, uh, there is the swimming pool, which is still present, 
and we have the impression of being on an ocean liner. So it's, uh, well, we don't see the photo in this photograph, but the portal windows, but it's uh, like the contrary when uh, in the ocean liners, they try to create, uh, to design them as they looked uh, as grand hotels, while in this case, uh, it's a grand, hotels that, grand hotel that tries to look like an ocean liner. And this is a photograph from uh, 2014 by Simon Chapeau. His uh, black uh, sky signature uh, like puts in evidence the architecture, the decorative and structural elements of the buildings. And you'll see an exhibition of photographs uh, by him at the Wilsonian that we made just uh, on occasion of this uh, Congress. So uh, I show you two examples of hotels by Polemiski and Russell. Uh, now we'd like to show you two mansions in particular. Um, <clears throat> as, um, as you know, also every state presented its own pavilion in, um, at the Chicago World's Fair, every American state. Florida presented a, a pavilion which was a more Mediterranean revival, but in the, sa in the same time, um, among the model houses, Florida presented the Florida Modern Home that you can see below. On the, on the right. It was designed by Robert Lowweed. And so this is the uh, drawing for the uh, Florida uh, Tropical Home, which is in our collection. You can see all the elements uh, that uh, um, will uh, characterize uh, the houses of Polevinsky and uh, Russell, like the roof terrace, the, um, the porch, the, uh, the cement cantilever, um, the huge windows to see like uh, the tropical landscape, and um, uh, and you can see how uh, it was then uh, transposed in real architecture by Polevinsky and uh, Russell. Uh, what is interesting is there is always the, this uh, um, connection between uh, in, uh, indoor and outdoor, which is always present in uh, their architecture, and. Um, which is not present in the new boxes uh, that are building nowadays. And uh, I went to check uh, if that the house is still here, because as you know, sometimes uh, you see a beautiful uh, house from the 20s, 30s, and then a few months later, it's not uh, there any longer. Um, fortunately, this house is still there. It's also very well preserved. It's on the Venetian Causeway. And, uh, <clears throat> You can see the, the detail of the spiral star staircase. This is the, uh, the photograph from uh, the archive. You can see how the, the staircase is double. It's uh, uh, indoor and outdoor. It's a very interesting uh, element. Um, and, uh, and the entrance, uh, you can see it, it's very modernist. It looks uh, like an international style house from a distance. But if you look at the details, you can see like the use of the fluting, like the um, or a, a reference to uh, modern classicism, the use of limestone, which is a local uh, material, and uh, again uh, the uh, combination of uh, horizontal and uh, vertical uh, ele elements. And if you think of uh, objects uh, uh, from the same period, this use of uh, fluting is present is present in uh, many of them and uh, coming with an influence coming from Germany in this case. Both uh, Otto Stuber was from Hamburg and Walter Van Essen is uh, an American uh, architect who came, who brought modernism from Germany. Uh, this is a, a photograph that I found on uh, Florida Architecture and Allied Arts. Unfortunately, I couldn't identify the house, so probably it's not, uh, uh, it's not, it doesn't exist any longer, just uh, for your information. Uh, and the, the last house I would like to, um, to talk about is the Rex house, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore. This is a photograph of the period. Um, <clears throat> it was built in 1941. Uh, we received a donation of an album of photos of the house by um, our friend uh, uh, Hank Ratama. And, um, the, so this is a photograph of the house before it was demolished in 2017. And the, the blueprints uh, by the architects, uh, Carlos Mari, uh, Marin, who made the restoration. So we were very excited to be able to at least document a house that, that has been demolished uh, 
in 2017 and we didn't know anything about it. So here you can see from, I mean, the, the blueprints are not very easy to, to read, but you can see the presence of a big arch that was uh, uh, walled up uh, when uh, um, Hank Rathama bought it in the, the 1990s. And the architect uh, recreated this uh, a big arch, which was like to a kind of a kind of breeze the way uh, between uh, the ocean and uh, the garden. And even uh, you can see here how it was uh, walled up and how it was then uh, recreated. Um, so it's, uh, we, then we started to research about uh, uh, who was the family that owned this house. Uh, the house that you seen it's more uh, in a way Mediterranean uh, revival. So um, probably Polyvinsky and Russell were uh, able to like uh, uh, please their clients that maybe liked uh, more uh, like the use of uh, wooden uh, rails instead of uh, having uh, um, uh, uh, iron or aluminum rails. But uh, anyway, we found the story of the, this uh, couple that came from Cleveland. They used to winter uh, on a boat and then decided to build a house. And um, um, the wife, Peggy Rex, was, very, uh, was an aviator and a very socialite. She organized parties for, uh, uh, for uh, aviators. In, um, uh, she was part of a club in uh, Cleveland where she used to live. Uh, in the in the summer, and uh, you can see here with uh, uh, Amalia Herod. And uh, uh, just briefly, I want to show you the photographs from the album, uh, which is in our uh, library. You can see the gate. Even uh, the gate is not really very modernist. It's probably, I assume, it was the taste of the clients. It's a, a cast iron gate, but you can see the floor. The floor is uh, limestone. This is like the, the courtyard. And uh, the, this uh, really uh, open, uh, completely open to nature. And it's also interesting to see these photographs of the period where Miami has just uh, probably the, high, uh, the highest building was the Freedom Tower at the time. And um, you can see the, the photographer is the Ernest Graham. He did a lot of photographs of the uh, of our, the architecture of the period. It's a good occasion also to see the interior. It's not always easy to, to see the interiors of these homes. Uh, the, um, the limestone fireplace, the architecture has a taste which is uh, definitely Art Deco. And this uh, big panel of uh, a, a, uh, like a sea uh, landscape. And uh, so the, um, the husband, um, was a radio amateur, so there was also a radio station in, uh, in the house. And um, uh, you can see here like the, the, front, the facade towards the, the sea, the ocean, the bay, and um, their, uh, their boat, and uh, like this uh, uh, love for the ocean that is present in all these elements uh, in, the, in the house that uh, refers uh, to, uh, to the boat uh, uh, nautical elements. And um, again, like just uh, as if we are uh, just uh, looking at the album, really like this atmosphere, this uh, big contact with nature, which is not so uh, present now. And uh, uh, Peggy Rex with his daughter on these uh, um, beautiful um, um, chaise longs that I couldn't identify who's the designer. And uh, just to, uh, to know about uh, uh, Igor Polevinsky, he, they were in partnership with him and Russell until the, 19, uh, until the war. And then, uh, like from 1936 until the war. And then after the war, uh, Igor Polevinsky um, associated with Bernard Johnson. And uh, uh, like his um, masterpiece is probably the Havana Riviera in um, uh, La Habana, Havana. And uh, the sea tower in uh, Fort Lauderdale, which is uh, still there and uh, still uh, uh, well preserved, luckily. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes. Please get to 
Ukraine mentioned this, but what's what's this history? Uh, he was the he went to University of Philadelphia. Oh, sorry, of Philadelphia, of Pennsylvania, and uh, his uh, professor was Paul Cray. So he started. Uh, he came from uh, Saint Petersburg, and uh, he was very young when uh, he arrived. I mean, I think he was uh, in his um, he was a teenager, and then uh, he started first in uh, engineer as an engineer, but then uh, he, he went to, uh, to the University of Pennsylvania and graduated in 1934, while uh, Russell graduated in 1935. So they met in, um, at the University of uh, Pennsylvania. It was on uh, San, Mar uh, San Marco Island in, uh, on the Venetian Causeway. I think the, the lot is empty now. Thank you very much. Thank you.